like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars faith can grow this is powerful faith can grow an individual's faith can grow and become robust and with it you are able to command great victories even in the spirit there are two questions recorded in scripture that the disciples asked jesus directly many really but two as far as their spiritual growth is concerned number one teach us to pray number two increase our faith they came to jesus and they saw that jesus did not seem to be teaching them about prayer like john taught them and they said listen there's something about the way we pray we're not getting results he said teach us to pray and then when they saw jesus that should be matthew uh, 15 there about from verse 21 to 28 he healed the woman's daughter who came crying and when they saw that healing they said increase our faith increase our faith we know that the reason we are not able to do this is a faith problem that was entire and sidon hallelujah in luke chapter 17 5 and 6 luke 17 please give it to us media luke chapter 17 5 and 6 that is the reference there the apostles said unto the lord increase our faith faith can grow but it only grows when it meets passion and desire if you do not see the need for increase in faith your faith will not grow and if your faith does not grow there are many possibilities you will screen you will see in scripture and even quote them that may never be captured in your christian experience for instance they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover that will remain a story until your faith grows every statement in scripture has a condition that makes it active in your life and if that condition is not fulfilled not satisfied it will remain a prophetic speaking that never comes to pass are we learning already hallelujah now there are two keys very quickly to grow in your faith the first is found in galatians chapter 3 from verse 5 the full text is 5 to 9 but let's consider galatians 3 and verse 5 there are two components to growing and building your faith number one is called the hearing of faith he therefore that ministered to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you how does he do it doeth he by the works of the law question or by the hearing of faith there is such a thing as the hearing of faith this is the first component that is responsible for any faith that must become robust what you hear is very important the correctness of the information listen carefully there are many believers who cannot have their faith built because they are hearing but what they are hearing does not have the power to impart faith not every information imparts faith there is an exact spiritual information that sustains the energy and the power to impart faith are we together now so the bible says to be careful what you hear that should be mark chapter 4 i believe 23 to 24 the hearing of faith mark it says if any man has ears to hear let him hear verse 24 and he said take heed what you hear everybody say take heed jesus is warning them now and he's saying do not give your attention to every information take heed what you hear because what you hear has an implication on your destiny there are people who stop believing God because they had something. There are people who stop living by the word because they had something. In the school of faith, the foundation for a robust faith is the correctness and the accuracy of your spiritual information. 
are we together when god wants to help a man and wants to build your faith he connects you to streams of accurate spiritual revelation accurate information when god gives you the gift of good men the gift of a teaching priest the gift of a pastor according to his heart as in jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 he says and i will give you pastors according to my heart are we together and that they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding there are many believers whose christian experience began to change the moment they encountered accurate information there are many people who believe but they have believed a lie and so when they stand with that information in the presence of real life situations it becomes impotent because the seed of truth is not in it he said sanctify them by thy truth to sanctify means to set apart see that thy word is truth you want to build your faith you must take the responsibility of working with the spirit and working with structured mentorship to help edit the things that you hear and the things that you believe at the pastors the leaders conference in the morning we consider the scripture in acts chapter 19 from verse 1 down to 4 the bible says it came to pass that while apollos was at corinth paul having passed through the upper coast he came to ephesus and the bible says finding certain disciples verse 2 he said unto them have you received the holy ghost since ye believed their response and they said unto him we have not so much as heard everybody say heard hmm. the problem was the hearing the reason why they did not experience the holy ghost was somebody told them something else may not have been the accurate information the problem is the hearing there was no hearing of faith are we together now yes so most believers have random spiritual information and they hope that one or two of those information will translate to a victorious life there are certain things if you do not hear and you do not believe as a believer you will never walk in power you will never walk in grace there is an exact body of information that constructs victory for a believer did you hear what i said not every spiritual information translates to a victorious life you must obtain grace from god and blessed be god that god gives you a pastor who through the sacrifice of alignment is able to distill spiritual knowledge and serve you with knowledge that is already prepared one of the reasons why you honor men of god who lead well is because of the sacrifice and the pain they have taken many of them using their own lives as guinea pigs to edit what works and what does not work and to serve you accurate life applicable result producing truth that the moment you receive it it's ready to work in your life they save you the labor of having to edit sense from nonsense they bring everything together and serve you with grace and when god gives you such a man honor him when god connects you to such a people honor them are we learning there are certain things every believer must know when it has to do with the school of knowledge there are some things if you do not know you will fail in life number one you must know who you are in christ as simple and as elementary as this truth is the foundation for walking and living in excellence is the revelation of who you are in Christ number two you must be aware of the vast spiritual resources that have been coordinated towards your life in Christ it's not enough to just know who you are you must know the spiritual resources that are available in Christ the Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises it says that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust do you know what God has given you the worship team again sang it beautifully excelling by the blood the word the name do you understand the spiritual resources that are given to you how many of you know that if i love you sincerely and i'm sending you probably to go somewhere at the island 
and run an errand for me i will most likely make arrangement for your transportation is that true i'll most likely give you the money to make any purchases god is not so irresponsible to send you and not put in place the spiritual provision that you do not know how to access them does not mean you were not given ephesians 1 and verse 3 blessed be the god of our father who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ do you believe that that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely for us how much more how will he not much more with him give us all things freely in fact the bible tells us according to first corinthians 2 that one of the ministries of the holy spirit is to reveal to us to bring us to the knowledge the comprehension of the things that have been freely given to us there are certain things if you do not hear if you do not have a man of god who helps you understand who you are in christ we live in a world of complicated identity depending on who you are listening to you go somewhere and someone calls you stupid and you believe it somebody else said don't mind who is calling you stupid then you change then somebody tells you you are a failure then you believe no he says but i know whom i believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day conviction is a product of knowledge there are things if you do not know you will dance to every tune till you dance your way to a failed life are we learning who you are in christ it's important for you to know the resources that have been given to you there are many things that god has given us as captured in his word for instance he says when men say there is a casting down you will say there is a lifting up it means there is an agency in the spirit that insists that you remain on top do you know what it is and do you know how to activate it you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you i'm teaching you how to have the faith that produces exploits listen let me tell you sincerely there are some things i believe can never happen to my life negatively no you see light can lift you beyond certain things and you will know that you have left certain realms forever one of it is i believe till the day i see the face of jesus i will never lack help i've indoctrinated myself to believe in the possibility of the ministry of men You may have heard me say if god wants to bless 10 people in this church i will start praying for the remaining nine it's true and this is not empty talk life will test your conviction life will test your conviction i found out from scripture that everybody in christ is a blessing Genesis 12 3 in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed you see you have this revelation that no matter where you go there must be help that will arise for you I have learned from scripture and I've learned from study it's impossible to be hated by all men even Satan is not hated by all men there are people who love him in spite of the fact that they know he's the devil so why will everybody in Lagos hate you that means there's a problem somewhere i said it during the minister's conference that even terrorists have wives they exchange vows with the wives the woman turn and say yes i will live with you forever say amen, amen. all you need is one person by god if you think it will take a crowd to bless you you don't know god one person one pharaoh one ahasuerus are we together one abimelech this is how god works there may be many noisemakers but just one encounter and there are eight billion people on earth this is my conviction so you don't just say i have favor based on what understanding the hearing of faith the hearing of faith I believe that there is no enchantment and no divination for as long as I'm serving the Lord. You see that now. I truly believe that if I did not have this light by God's grace, only God would tell how many times they've carried our names to what shrines and said what's there. 
<laughs> Joshua Selman, make sure you don't see Sunday. And Sunday, here am I again. You see, investigating who, who hates you is a useless body. God did not give you that ministry. In, build a garrison around your life by light so that it does not matter. He said, No weapon fashioned against you. Do you believe that? Or are you just quoting it? Fashion. Fashion. I was talking to our dear people and I said, um, when we started, when we started our ministry, someone truly, not just an exaggerated story, one of our overflows, they just carried a charm and I was even away on a trip and the owners of the facility called me and said, there's something they've discovered. I said, really? Leave it for me. I know what to do with it. I said, who is this foolish person now who wants to kill himself for nothing? Instead of you to come to church and receive the same blessing you want, you now want to die for nothing. He suffered no man to do them wrong. This is the basis of that confidence. Don't make bold statements without a scriptural garrison. This is why many believers get disappointed. God forbid, nobody will touch me based on what? Because you think men like you, you are joking. Wake up. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He never said to do all wrong. There are people you can hurt and go free. But there are some them immune by the jealousy of God. He reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It's true. It's true. Are you learning now? So the first component Building Bible faith depends on the quality and the correctness of the spiritual information you hear. Let me show you something. I hope you are learning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give us Luke chapter 13, please. For sake of time, I'll read 11, 12, then I'll jump to 16 and 17. The Bible says, this is the story of the woman. Remember the woman who was bound 18 years? I want to show you an interesting story. The power of God is going to come on someone now. I just saw this. No, no, it's not. Amen. It's not everybody. There's somebody, the power of God. And please, that person will start running. Just hold the person so it doesn't injure themselves. Let me just do my thing. The, the way the Holy Spirit works and sometimes why he does these things I do not know but the prophetic word for that person is that you will never remain at that same level that there is there is a there is a cause that have kept people in your family in one position and so what the Spirit of God is doing now is a prophetic act an energy of the Spirit will rest upon you so when that person please I want you to just hold the person so you don't maybe so they don't injure themselves why God does this, honestly, I do not know. Sometimes he just does this as a sign and a wonder. Let's continue. Behold, there was a woman, watch this, who had a spirit of infirmity. How long? 18 years. And she bowed herself together and could in no wise lift herself. The terrible thing about this scripture is that she was going to church. For all those years, she went to church. There was somebody she listened to every other day. When Jesus saw her in church, he called her and said, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. Follow carefully. Uh-huh. Maybe let's just read it down to 13. Then he laid his hands upon her. Follow closely. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Next verse, please. The Bible says, when the ruler of the... You see those people? The ruler of the synagogue. This is a category of people to not listen to. They answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. And they said unto the people, there are six days. Look at the kind of sermons they were listening to. This woman was almost dying. And see the content of the information they were serving them. There are six days in which men ought to walk. In them, come and be healed. Don't come on this day. 
the Lord rebuked them and said you are hypocrites if your goat falls on Sunday I'm paraphrasing it using a Nigerian expression if your goat falls somewhere on Sunday will you not go and pick it will you say that I will leave it there until Monday he said you are hypocrites verse 16 now Jesus brings an information that this woman had never heard he said ought not this woman help me being a daughter of Abraham this is the basis were you not mentored that when God called Abraham he left a promise to him that in thee shall all the families be blessed and that that blessing was for Abraham and his seed that seed being Christ and according to Galatians 3 29 it says and if ye be Christ then are ye heirs according to the promise do you not know that based on your connection to Abraham you should not suffer this I'm sure the woman was saying I've never been told listen to me there are many believers today who would have been blessed and I'm speaking generally to the body of Christ if only they heard the right things it matters what you hear not just that you hear is the reason why every man of God must obtain grace from God and stay with the word come up with with information that is true indeed to serve God's people not just opinions so that you don't say amen to what will never come to pass are we together so the hearing of faith it matters what you hear have you been told that you have been exalted with christ raised up with him far above principalities far above all vicissitudes of life the bible says he that cometh from above is above all if you don't believe that it will not work for you are we together now that when men say there is a casting down their believer for you there is a lifting up and constructing the understanding that produces victory in your life you cannot have random spiritual knowledge a mix of culture wise sayings and a little of bible and you want exploits no your understanding must be so altered and adjusted to give the spirit room to produce power through your life you cannot help weak people when you believe you are weak too it doesn't work that way you see that you must believe you are the individual standing by grace at a vantage position then you are able to help that everything your hand finds to do you do it with grace and that it works for you because your hands are blessed the day you have this understanding nothing dies in your hands believe me this is not just church talk nothing dies because grace flows through understanding grace flows through understanding grace flows through understanding it is your understanding that becomes a pipe for grace to flow through your life if your understanding is poor or inaccurate grace cannot flow it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge the question i'm asking you is what do you believe now that you need to change what do you not believe that you need to start believing it says beware take heed what you hear there are things i used to believe before i don't believe them again there are things i didn't used to believe before i believe them now there are things i used to believe before i still believe them now there are things i didn't believe before i will not believe them forever you must have the floodity of 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 the the ability and the fortitude to transit your knowledge until you prime yourself properly towards a victorious life don't hold any loyalty to wrong information and say well but i believe this all my life you can change did you hear what i said you can change so you want to build your faith the first area to address is the correctness of the information thank God for a church like this that God has brought you where you can sit down and listen to truth that is able to build is able to change you Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now 
I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, the Bible says, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Hallelujah. Watch this. I want you to challenge yourself today as you go back home and challenge yourself that from today, I will begin to take personal responsibility to work on my beliefs. There are certain wise sayings you should get out of your life. I didn't offend anybody. Nobody should offend me. Delete it out of your life. The whole world lieth in wickedness. The condition for an attack is that you are born, not that you offend anybody. The moment you are born, ask Moses, ask Jesus. Who did Moses offend? Who did Jesus offend? The moment you are born, you are a candidate for an attack. You define your realities based on the shield of faith, wherein you will be able to quench all, not some, the fiery darts. The devil will kill what he can kill, steal what he can steal, destroy what he can destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life. Do you believe that? <laughs> Satan is called a thief, not a friend. So if you ever see him around your vicinity, he's not looking for a relationship. He came to destroy you. And if you allow him, he will tear your life one by one. With an energy you cannot explain. You would think because he's taught you your health, he will pity you. Wait till you see what he does to your finances. Then wait till you see what he does to your children. Satan is a messless and a vicious and a stubborn spirit. You need to be able to stand your ground. He says, haven't done all to stand. Stand. He will tear your ministry if you give him room. He will tear your husband and your wife. Don't watch your children going haywire and say it's just the time. They will change one day. This is where science and religion agree that nothing changes on its own. You have to exert a force to change things. Is someone hearing? Lagos is not opening up for you. You are saying one day go better. You are joking. No, you are joking. In this Bible, the Bible says right from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffered violent. Finish that scripture for me. It says the violent. You still remember that scripture? The violent will take it by force. By force. Not by consensus. Not by negotiation. Not by discussion. The language in the realm of the spirit is power. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Hallelujah. Does the devil want to kill you this night? Yes. It's not prophecy. It's what he wants to do all the time. There is no special day he wants to destroy you. Every opportunity he has. But hallelujah, the Bible says, I lay me down and I slept, Psalm 3. He says, but I wake for the Lord sustained me. He said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Who made the day? Not God and Satan. Satan also had to wait for the day to be made to attack. So if you are in relationship with the one who made the day, that means your interest was considered in the making of that day. I expect every day to churn out favor, every day to move me forward, not just because of myself, because of the integrity of the maker of that day. This is my understanding. You need to construct your understanding. I'm teaching you how Bible faith works. If I call two believers now and I say, will you be great? Yes. Why? you don't know me that's not you are not answering my question why do you think you are going to be great because you are in lagos no try to answer it in your mind what gives you guarantee that your children will be great i just have this feeling you are wrong so wrong psalm 1 112 let me help you blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands the bible says his seed shall be mighty psalm 112 112 his seed shall be mighty upon earth he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed the generation not just the children that should be the basis of your confidence listen our audacity in the kingdom is not based on what we want it's based on what god has said 
God is only committed to what he has said, not what you want. When you align what you want to what he has said, it will look like he's answering what you want. God does not answer what you want. He answers what you want that is consistent with what he has said. Again, let me repeat for emphasis. God does not just answer, just because you wrote something you want, does not mean God will answer it. There are rules that God himself is bound to. He is bound to the jurisdiction of his word. He is all powerful, but he responds. The modus operandi of God is his word. He cannot act outside of the jurisdiction of his word. So, a, a lamentation in ignorance will touch God, but it will not bring answers. He is moved at the feelings of your infirmity. We call that compassion, but he responds to his word. If you want to get God to move, find what he has said. The point of action for God is what he has said. Even the anointing of the spirit has the singular assignment of fulfilling what he has said. Genesis 21, 1. Please shout that scripture when you see it projected. Is God helping someone already? Genesis 21 and verse 1. One to read. Aha. Uh -huh. One more time. God only visits as he has said. He only does as he has spoken. So what has he said concerning you? That I am the head and not the tail. So I expect a performance. What has he said? I am above only and not beneath. Listen, if you don't believe this, if you are too big to believe this, you will suffer in life as if Jesus did not die. Are we together now? There remaineth a rest for the people of God. The Bible says for they had the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. Not mixed with faith in them that heard. He said today when you hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. Don't say this man of God is just talking nonsense. Especially when you don't have results. It is foolish for a student without result to edit what his lecturer is saying. Have results first. Then you can say, let me refer to this. When you are given a formula by professionals, even in the academia, you are not given the liberty to edit until you earn a certain status. Are we learning? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law. What is the basis for the success? This book of the law. Not this business you are doing. As important as that is. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein. You know what it means to meditate? To ponder until it sinks into your spirit. Day and night that thou mayest do. We are coming there. That will be the last key and then I, we are done for tonight. Your faith will never grow until you put together everything God has said and begin to believe them. It is your responsibility to use the discipline. Take advantage of the grace that God supplies. Put a compendium of the speakings of God that relates to every area of your life. You know that people die anywhere you are coming from. Listen to me. The oldest person did not cross 25 and you are already laughing. Get scriptures. I shall not die but live. Because it is only what God said that is committed to doing. Do you believe that? Man of God, what gives you the basis that members will come and keep coming to your church? I think I'm a good man. Sincere but wrong answer. You don't know men. They ran away from Jesus, talk more of you. What did Jesus do? So what makes you believe that because they came yesterday, they'll come tomorrow? When the Bible said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Didn't Peter run away? Everybody ran away from him. Where were the guys that ate his bread and wanted to make him king? Men for you. That means there must be something more than a good heart. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you the truth. If you find this thing bar, you have found it. There is nothing the devil can do. If you find it, what makes you believe you will prosper? You know how much one bag of rice is now? 
Huh? 80,000. Who is selling the one you are calling 90? Call the person and say, don't be fair. Don't be unfair. My friend, things may not be bad, but don't use the opportunity to oppress people. Are we together? You can define your reality. That someone can come to you and say, my sister, I've been sent by God to bless you every month. If you don't believe what I just said, you are not a Christian. Because it happened to Elijah. Is that not true? Except you don't. Listen, don't pick the parts that is convenient for you in scripture and believe. If your faith does not allow you to believe that, grow your faith to a level where you believe it. But don't just say it cannot happen. No, don't sell unbelief to people because of the depravity of your spiritual growth. If you don't believe God can go that far, then step back and learn how to grow your faith until you can believe God. A bird brought bread to a prophet. It was not a parable. It actually happened. God will not send ravens to bring bread every day. But there are times you, before your crops grow and you harvest, you will need a miracle to sustain you. You have farmed well, but it takes a while. Seed time and harvest subscribe to the law of process. What do you do while the seed is growing? You will need supplies that will sustain you. Hallelujah. And God visited Sarah as he had said. God healed this person as he has said. So when you go to God in prayer, you see that now. You go to God on the basis of what he has said, not the basis of what you want. Prayer only works when you connect what you want to what God has said. The challenge with believers is we write things out of pain and sympathy and say, God, you died for me. You must answer it. This is the man who must give me one million tomorrow. If not, you are not God. And God says, I don't work that way. I promise you that I will raise men, but I did not write their names in the Bible. Leave the men to me. I'm the one who knows how to. By the time you write a name, you are manipulating me. And it doesn't work that way. What if the man says, I won't bless you as an act of my will? God will respect his greed and use another person. Is that true? But by the time you tie your, your heart to your uncle, you will be angry every day. And God says, look at what I can do. I can bring a stranger. Let me give you one testimony. And, and I'm just saying it to the glory of God. Preparing for a conference in the USA. And, and it's not because the means was not there. Someone just calls and says, I don't know the person. I've never met the person. I don't know if I've met the person. And the person said he wanted to be anonymous. He said, please let us know how much everything for the auditorium, all through during the conference, everything, let the invoice be given you once to person. No, no, no. They've, that has been said. He said, no, he's going to do it. Who are you? He doesn't want to be known. doesn't want to know everything. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this same 20, 2024. Now, I'm saying this not to brag. I hope you understand. If your faith has not reached the point where you believe God is El Shaddai, start the journey of building it now. If you're a man of God here, let me tell you, except you want to compromise. If it's the God of the Bible that you want to see him move in your life, you must build your faith. There are many pastors whose faith is small. That's why their result is small. You know what your faith is? Your capacity to believe God. And that comes based on the quality of spiritual information that you hear. All blessings come from God, but they come through men. Provided there are men alive, you should not be stranded. You begin to cry only when all the men in your locality are dead. But provided somebody is alive, everybody will not tell God no. And you don't need to know them for them to bless you. Knowing them is an advantage. They looked on to him. Is that still in your Bible? They looked on to him. Listen. 
I'm taking out time to show you this. I want to stretch your faith this night. If you cannot believe God for help, then the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Huh? It says, from whence come it? Not our help. I don't know where you get your horse from. But it says, my help. My help, just like faith, my help come it. Now watch this. He said it come from the lord pastor the maker i like that name do you know god as the maker it's not only the heavens and the earth he makes he makes destinies the maker when the maker decides to visit your business when the maker decides to visit your ministry you know what it means to make ask women if i say make pounded yam and soup for me what do you need the ingredients and the bible says and god is able to make all grace how many grace all grace all the dimensions of grace that must be present hallelujah he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me say i am anointed let the devil hear you say i am anointed it doesn't matter what the devil tells you you don't have to be a man of god i'm anointed the spirit of god is at work in me yes sir that means the results that follow the anointed should follow me many of us limit the result to just praying for the sick no extraordinary supernatural possibilities my goodness you need to believe this you need to believe this carry this mentality see this is my thinking this is how faith is built so the one who wants to build his faith is the one who journeys with the spirit through scripture finding what god has said and daring to believe them can i tell you every time you find what god says every truth does not it meets an information that is already occupying its space it is your assignment to displace that information and replace it with the truth you have your heart is not empty your mind is not empty your truth will meet one lie somewhere there that has been there since you were small you insist by the word till that lie gets out of your mind listen let me tell you sincerely i came from a background where i saw people struggle in ministry sincere people everybody will wish you well but help you will never see they will say may god who called you go with him there let him know what to do with you sincerely so and i said no this is i can't live like this after covid there are people who plunge to depression till today they've not recovered they lost billions everything went down you see that now now i i sympathize with you but if your life crashes just because certain zeros disappear because of a business you don't know god those zeros is just psychology hmm. see everything that left you the same way you see your money in the bank is not in your pocket but you know it's there and that under a certain condition it will gravitate back to your destiny this is how you ma so you can laugh even when things look like they've left you they are still on earth nothing leaves the earth is still there under a certain condition ezekiel 37 i prophesied as i was commanded and the bible says there was a sound all those bones that were scattered the skeleton was still intact they were just scattered in various locations like your health part of it is in europe part of it is in america are we together part of your lifting is somewhere in ibadan but under a certain condition there is a word that gravitates this is true believe this beware what you hear there are things that when you hear don't fight don't quarrel but just leave it quietly and say i will not believe this no way i will not believe this I will not believe this. Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, wonderful statement, I will never believe it. The struggle does not continue for me, no. I walk circumspectly. 
as wise and not as unwise i redeem the time by knowing what the will of god is is someone learning now you are in ministry and they say there is no space for you you know that god is a way maker he is so he is so he is so you doubt that he is you are right here in this building today you see there are things some people are holding now that does not belong to them they are only caretakers it's in your bible he said go to a city whose roads divide and lose a colt there that no man had ridden on even the owner was not permitted to ride on the colt because it did not belong to him there are things there are prophets people are holding now that is for certain conferences they don't even know they don't know why they cannot spend it under a certain condition you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer Spare me five minutes and let me give you the last key. Is someone learning now? Look at me. You see that an attack on your word study life is not an attack on your Bible study. It's an attack on your destiny. Satan knows for as long as you do not know and cannot believe what God has said, you will never see a performance in your life. Show me a man who does not have a job yet. Show me a man whose destiny has not opened up yet, but he's spending time feasting on the word, building his conviction. I show you a man that all doors and all gates must open for. Must. Must open. Must open. Because scripture cannot be broken. He said, have respect for the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are a habitation of cruelty. Have respect. You created the system by yourself. Honor it, O God. That you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Man of God, I'm showing you how to petition God to open the doors of your ministry. If you sit down, you are just waiting for someone to come and promote you. You'll be wasting your time. Human beings are not that selfless. They can be selfless. But human beings are intrinsically self-centered. You will need to define your possibility father you sent me and you called me and the bible says the lord gave the word then he says great was the company hold on that means nobody who helps to lift the vision under me should be small because he said great was the company there is a destiny connecting everybody who becomes part of your vision great was the company that means worship team none of you should be small because the bible said great you are helpers of the vision and you can stand before god and say father i am a faithful worker in this church i should not beg it was not my fault that my father went to be with the lord but the bible said the lord gave the word you gave your servant the word i am part of the great that company publishing and I have been faithful doing so. And the Bible says a worker is worthy of his wages. This is how this thing works. Oh. This is how this thing works. This is how this thing works. When the Lord gave us instruction to move to Abuja. I got there. I think I've shared it here. I said my God. What do I do? No idea where we we'll use. No idea who will help me. No guarantee people will come. To make matters worse i'm not on social media what in the world is how am i going to navigate my way my goodness this god i will worship him forever love, love him forever, him forever, forever because, because, because this god is too good i will worship him forever love him forever Apostle, where will my customers come from? Here, not the streets. Where will my increase come from? Here, 
where will the healing anointing come from in honor to what god has said why will god anoint you because i pray no sir because he said so the assignment of your prayer is to bring that prophetic petition that in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 Lord I come from a family where nobody has risen but while I prayed you showed me from scripture that right from when I was in my mother's womb like Jeremiah you called me and ordained me to be a prophet where is that mantle oh God that you sent to walk with me and a grace will rest on you and turn you from that village to become a global wonder believe me believe me believe me I sense in my spirit God is expanding someone's faith this excuses you are giving you will remain down that way it's time to get sad waiting for things to happen will leave you in disappointment believers don't wait for things to happen leads me to the second part the Bible says be careful how you hear your attitude what you hear is the first law of growth in your faith but how you hear you can hear the right thing and not respond to it accurately the proof of hearing is accurate response if i say come please come that means you heard me well right please go back sir if i say come sit down come sit down come no i mean sit down i want to illustrate something stand up if i say come you sit down but don't come come did he hear me well the only proof that you had is that you obey according to what you had accurate response is the proof that you heard if it be thou bid me come and he said come he never said peter come he said come anybody would have acted on that word when it was time to resurrect lazarus he said lazarus because if he just said come out that would be it every dead person will come back to life but when it had to do with walking on water if it be thou bid me come if he said peter come and james walks that would be disobedience but he said come the same way nobody's name was written here if you diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day my bible says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you i believe this i believe this all the nations of the earth it doesn't matter what nation i believe this listen to me if you are still at a level of the anointing where you feel you are stunted the key is not to run around just looking for who lays hands on you the laying on of hands is a doctrine but the first thing you need to do is to go to scripture how god anointed jesus of nazareth ah huh? with the holy ghost and we why do i have the holy ghost alone he said with the holy ghost and i have seen the holy ghost where is the power part because he anointed him with the holy ghost and what and man of god i've seen the holy ghost part where is the power because elijah came in this john came in the spirit and power of elijah i've seen the spirit where is the power that becomes the basis of your engaging listen to me can i tell you nothing and your intelligence according to job chapter 32 and verse 8 any who said there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty naked men of understanding that is what the power to prosper does it will breathe upon your understanding giving you superior spiritual illumination the next place the power to prosper rests on is the works of your hands that everything you do is blessed supernaturally then the third thing the power to prosper does is to rest on your feet giving you accuracy of direction to the right audience that have the capacity to reward you so it's not just a generic thing that rests on you it's why believers keep saying i have the power to prosper and they fail because when it rests on their mind they don't engage with it when it rests on the works of their hands there is no work in their hand for it to bless the lord is my shepherd 
the Lord is my shepherd. One more time, the Lord is my shepherd. Why will I not want? What does a shepherd do? No, the Bible lists every function of a shepherd in that scripture. He guides, he leads, he restores. So if you say the Lord is your shepherd, have you allowed him to guide you? Have you allowed him to lead you? There is a difference between direction and guidance. Direction shows you the correct destination. Guidance shows you the steps to get to that destination. You can receive direction, but without guidance, you will still not get there. The assignment of direction is to show you the correct destination. The assignment of guidance is to show you the steps. If you direct me, you will tell me, follow that door and go out. But if you are guiding me, you will tell me, if you jump here, you will still die and you will not get to that destination. You have to show me how to navigate my path past seasons. The word of God provides both guidance and direction. It is a lamp to my feet and a light to my I'm going to pray for you. Listen. This is how this thing works. It is not story stories. I will tell you why this thing does not work for many believers. We don't engage. God is speaking to someone. God gave you an instruction to sow a seed. You argued it away and casted the voice of God because of greed. And God said, okay, I respect you, but you will remain there. And you are complaining, God, why are you lifting others? Because when they heard the word the same way you heard, they mixed it with faith. The Bible says, a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? When others are working and serious, you may be playing or maybe doing something you should not do. The, the basic way God blesses believers is by placing his anointing upon the works of their hands. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, to do, to do, to do. To do, to do. How about preachers? But nobody's listening to me. I think people just don't like me. Say lie. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Approved unto God. There is a relationship between laziness and shame. A, a, a relationship between laziness and shame. God will not send responsible, well-structured people to you to sit under your grace when you've not put your life together, spiritually and intellectually. Nobody will carry his wife and children and come and camp around you. No excellence, no administration, no understanding of scripture, no grace, no dexterity, no intelligence. People love you, but they love themselves too. So when you are praying that God should bring people, you make room for the blessing. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. The problem was not the continuity of the oil. It was the limitation of the vessel. If your mind is this way, God cannot bless you this way. He hates waste. That's why 12 baskets were gathered. God does not waste grace. He, re he ministers grace according to the capacity provided. So while I fast and pray and read books and study and open myself to materials, I am saying, Lord, this is how far I want you to use me. Listen, let me tell you this. If God has called you, jumping around to tell people God has called you is marketing your failure in public because you will fail woefully. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Your assignment is not to go around saying, try me, God has called me. No. Announcing you is exclusively the ministry of God. Paul plants Apollo waters. The Bible never said God gives increase. Then Paul plants and Apollo waters. He waits for Paul to plant. He waits for Apollos to water. Then he brings increase. So if he has not brought increase, don't tell him bring increase. Check your planting. Check your watering. Hallelujah. Father, I want you to lift me as a worship minister to the nations. How many songs do you have? Four. I love you, but the nations, when God announces you like that, he's announcing himself to you. You don't have the capacity to sustain his name if he gives you that platform. You see it now. So with four songs, the body of Christ will exhaust your value in one month and there will be nothing else to serve. So because you are in an elevated position, you will start derailing other people because you are supposed to be a reason 
to help people to inspire people i want to have a global ministry do you have can you preach six sermons in one week and preach with excellence and grace can you preach to all kinds of audience and communicate christ with intelligence can you preach controversial topics and navigate your way with intelligence these things are not an impartation it's a learned ability as you give yourself to study you are saying lord this is how far i want you to use me god will not disgrace his name by sending you to the nations no sir have to close. <laughs>